Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Well, I'm in Knoxville at the warehouse this week at a class working on our new exciting hands-on projects that are coming up for 2018. And I was speaking with Liz, who was one of our tech support, and I asked her, what are some questions that you get over and over on the help desk that I could possibly answer on video? And she said she was getting a lot of questions on the satin stitch. So I want to explain, and I know we've had videos on this before, but I really want to go through and explain about the different satins and how they work. Now the first thing that we think of as a satin is, I'm going to, it's right here, and this is a steel stitch. Now this is a balanced satin right to left and it's always perfect. So if I grabbed my steel stitch and I came in and I just am left mouse clicking, when I finished and right mouse click, you can see that's a nice balanced satin. Let me turn off my 3D for a moment. The width's 2.5, the steel density's 0.5. If I did a corner, I've got a sharp corner picked. I could have picked bevel or round depending on how I wanted that cornering to look. The inset is talking about if how much is this going to be inset if I, right now it says 50%. So if I had a square here or any kind of object bordering it, I'm telling it I want you to be 50% inside and 50% outside. So that's what that means. And one repeat, I just want it to stitch once. I don't want it to stitch over itself. So that is our steel stitch. Now you can reach it up here if you just want to create a steel stitch yourself by only the stitch. I could have also come and picked my artwork tools and you know I, I love working with the artwork tools because everything's clean and pretty. So if I came in here and did the same thing, left mouse clicking to create my points, right mouse click, right mouse click excuse me, to create my line. Whoops, there we go. Now I would select that and I could come down here on my one click wonders at the bottom and select a steel. I'm going to get all the same settings right here that I had when I drew it from up here. So that's two ways to create a steel stitch. Now I'm going to come in and the next one we want to talk about is our satin stitch. Now this is a path satin. So I'm going to click on it and that's the one that looks like a little red grub worm. I'm going to left mouse click and now I'm going to do a series of left mouse clicks until I create the shape I want that satin to be. Okay, so I'm creating a satin here and I'm just going ahead and I'm creating it all the way till I'm finished with the shape. Now once I'm there and if you'll notice right here at the bottom it said enter, whoops, it said enter satin paths points. So what it's telling me is to click all these left mouse clicks to create my points. Now I'm finished with that, I'm going to right mouse click. And now you see it says in that same spot, right down at the bottom left hand corner, it said enter inclination lines. Since we're creating a satin stitch, it's now telling us to give it the angles. So, and you notice there's a little black diamond stuck to my cursor. I'm going to left mouse click and hold down my left mouse key and drag that across. Hold down my left mouse key and drag that across. Now I can add as many inclination or angle lines until I'm finished. Now I wouldn't need to put this many. I'm just left mouse clicking and dragging so you can watch the progression. Now as I come up here my angle's going to change, right? I'm going around this corner. So I need that angle to kind of change with me. So you get the idea. Hold down your left mouse click, grab, and let go. So if I left mouse click, hold it down, when I get to the right hand side, I'm going to let go. And now I'm geared up to put in another inclination line or angle line. Now once I have those in, this is the path or the angle my stitches will go. Now I'm going to right mouse click 
and at the bottom you're going to see it says enter entry point you see a green diamond now notice something right here on this bottom leg on the left hand side it's got a big yellow circle because it's suggesting the software suggests put your start one there now if I just left mouse click it's going to go there because that's what it had selected now over here now it's telling me enter exit point you notice this one got a big round circle around it so if I just left mouse click it's going to go right there now you notice I got a box up and this says, I've created satin segments whose width exceeds the recommended maximum stitch length of 10 millimeters. Now, here's what we want to do on this, or what you can do. I don't know that you want to. This is personal preference. You should never try to stitch a satin stitch really over 7 or 8 millimeters, especially on a knit. But you can go up to 10 millimeters and not have a problem. Wider than that, your machine's going to have the problem. Because you'll notice sometimes you... you enlarge a design and your machine will go chick, and then it'll go chick, chick, and then it'll stitch in but it won't pick up any thread. That's because you've made a stitch too wide for the revolution of the bobbin. It cannot pick up that bobbin thread. So it kind of makes a couple of little chick chick sounds as the needle kind of acts like it's going but there's nothing to pick up because the bobbin's not in the right place. You don't make them over 10 millimeters wide. Your machine's not going to pick it up. So what we can do is we've got a couple of options. I can come to my tools, go down to the bottom option, which is preferences. And now I can go into the word digitizing, the tab. Now here you notice it says auto split new satin paths. So what this will do if I select this and I say OK, if I create a path that's too wide now, it'll automatically split it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So just for review, we're going to select this stitch, left mouse click until you've completed your object, whatever it is you're creating. If I could draw, I'd create something really cool here, but I can't, so I won't. Now I'm just doing left mouse clicks. Now remember, when I finished my shape, I'm going to right mouse click. Now there's my inclination lines. Hold down my left mouse key, drag it to the right side. Hold down my left mouse key, drag it. Okay, once you drag it, you let go of that mouse key. Now I'm going to start making my angle here for my stitches. And remember, you can always adjust these. If it comes out and it looks horrible, you can, you'll be able to come back and move these a little bit just by grabbing them, holding down your left mouse key, and moving them. Okay, so I could kind of adjust those. Now that that's done, when I right mouse click now, it's going to say, I'm, I want to start here. If I let the software pick it, I'll just right mouse click. Now it's saying I would put the stop here. Now I could put the stop anywhere I want. I could put the stop up here and left mouse click, and it would put it there. I usually go with the default because I usually don't know what I'm doing. So now I've created this. Now you notice I didn't get the message up, did I? Let's put our 3D on. Notice it automatically split that stitch where it was too wide to stitch across. So if you want the software to automatically split satins that are too big, you select that option under Tools, Preferences, Digitizing. So again, that's Tools, Preferences, Digitizing and you would auto split new satin paths. Now you can check, select it, deselect it for something later and go back. Whatever you want, this can go on and off. But as long as you don't deselect it, from now on your program has been told to do that and it will continue to do that until you tell it not to. Now the last satin I want to talk to you about is a block satin. It's the fan, the big red fan. Now this, I kind of think of a ladder. I'm going to left mouse click, left mouse click. Now see how it looks kind of like a ladder? I'm doing a block of satin stitches at once. Now I can do the shapes I want. I just have to kind of swing left, okay, right, left and right, left, right, left, right, left, right. You get the idea. 
Now once I've gotten there, I'm going to right mouse click. Now that will create that satin all in one fell swoop. You don't, as, as you notice this block, okay, let's come here. This block, this line that's across here is actually going to be the angle is going to be set between those two points. So see how this one is, it kind of curves around. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I right mouse click here, now let's select this. Okay, and I'm going to right mouse click on it. No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm going to select it. My mind just went blank. What I want to do, oh, I'm sorry, I've got to come to the shape tool. It happens to me. Okay, here on the left hand toolbar, you've got your select, you've got your lasso, and your next is your shape. I'm going to click on that. Now you'll notice everywhere I put one of those mouse clicks, the blocks, it created the angle line. So of course I could change these by just moving them, left mouse clicking and dragging, but this creates the angle lines as you draw. But of course you don't have as much freedom when you're doing a block satin as when you're doing a path satin. I can be much more creative with a path satin for me than I can with a block satin. But these are the three types of satin stitches in Floriani software and that is how they're created. Okay, the steel stitch is merely a line and it creates the stitch from a single straight line. Or you can use your steel stitch up here. Your path satin is right here. This is the little red grub worm that you can make any shape you want, but then you must add your inclination lines your start point and your stop point and then it will generate stitches. Or you have your block satin that you actually create in blocks of satin stitches and everywhere you drop a point to create a block that will be your inclination line. When you right mouse click on this it's going to create the satin all at once. So we've learned about the three types of satin stitches. We've learned about the auto split if your satin is too wide we've learned that we can tell the software after a certain width please start splitting this for me so that it's not too wide for my machine to stitch so you have quite a bit of flexibility within the satin stitch so I hope you enjoyed this week's project of the week and hope you learned something new about the satin stitches or at least got a refresher so have a great week and I look forward to seeing you next week.